Brethren, we thank God. We thank God and praise him. This still remains a resurrection moment. The 40 day journey of the Lord is resurrection. He moved about. And just like we saw, we have seen it before, we see it again, that he walked on earth 40 days presenting himself alive. And during the 40 day journey, he made several appearances and it is these appearances that we are, you know, energizing ourselves with, that we go in and read more because they appeal to us. They are there for us. Everything that Jesus did, especially, now we are talking about the resurrection moments, they for our good, they ground us, they strengthen us, and they make, they make us firmer in our faith because he presented himself alive. And so this time, one of the things that we are going to talk about is based on, um, you know, closed doors. You know, the, uh, the disciples, because of fear, you know, there were men and some of them were women. And the, the, the situation was so intense, was so tense that they had to hide themselves. And so we base on John chapter 20. And we're going to read from verse 19. And the Bible says clearly that on the evening of that day, the day of the resurrection, we're talking about the resurrection of our Lord, which is the center of our faith. That it was the first day of the week, and that was Sunday, that Jesus rose from the dead. The doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. And so friends, just like I've already said, everything that was done in the 40 days, every appearance that we see is for your strengthening, is for my strengthening. Now these men, these people for fear had gone into hiding and of course, evening, when evening comes, many times fear creeps in. And the reason why we close our doors for fear of anything that could come. And so these people hide themselves inside. And one thing that I find in this scripture here, that there is no safe place. There is no safety anywhere without the Lord Jesus Christ. Not saved at all. Even when they had closed their doors, but they were in fear. Even when they were in a group, they were in fear. Because actually we have people who fear when they are alone. I have experienced this, you are alone, and you look devastated when you are alone. But these ones look devast looked devastated even when they were in a group. And so, no safe place anywhere. No safe body or personal situation without the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus' presence makes a difference. And he makes unsafe places safer. He makes unsafe circumstances safer. He makes in I mean places that are fearful. You are fearful, you are, he changes. And so we discover that the Lord Jesus Christ is a changer of things from negative from negative to positive from bad to good from insecure to secure his presence is what we are dwelling on this time even when the doors were closed and so there are places that seem insecure that places that seem unsafe but the moment jesus appears there's joy there is happiness there's jubilation there is peace Yes, there are some people who seem dangerous. There are some people who seem bad. But the moment Jesus appears, of course, he changes the very people that seem to be bad, to be dangerous. He saves them. And there is joy with such a people when Jesus comes around in their life. And so this message is a message of encouragement to us. We may seem uncertain, these men and women were in a season, were in a period of uncertainty. But Jesus came 
and stood in their midst. And I just want to mention a few things. One of the things that actually we find in this scripture is that he comes, like I read in verse 19, and he pronounces, peace be with you. And so my brother, my sister, what you need most in your life, what these men and women needed most when they were in their closet, they needed peace. And so Jesus comes and pronounces, peace be with you. It was a standard greeting among the Jews. And so it can, be, it can continue being a greeting, wishing one another peace. When you go to church, at the closure of the church service, service leader, the priest of the Lord, will pronounce, peace be with you. And so I sit here, I pronounce this, because Jesus left us this mandate, peace be with you. And you need it in your house. You need it in your life. You need peace at your workplace. You need peace. In our country, we need peace. And so Jesus pronounces peace in this verse 19. Peace be with you. And one other thing that actually Jesus lives with them. In verse 21, the Bible says that Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, even so I am sending you. But where are they? They are in the closet. They are closed up. Now Jesus leaves them with a mission. One thing that I've mentioned first is peace, which you have read in verse 19. And in verse 21, he leaves them a mission to go to get to step out and accomplish. And so I send you is a mission. Step out for a mission. When you're a student at university, you are in a closet. And now on your graduation, the moment they pronounce by virtue of authority entrusted to me, I confer. And when you are conferred upon, you get out. And so that actually you go and put into practice the things that you have learned. Now Jesus Christ here said, I am sending you. So my brother, God, Jesus is sending you. My sister, Jesus is sending you. And everyone is, and you don't just move out. You need to be empowered. Jesus did empowerment here. He did the strengthening of the, the men and women that were sending out. And so here he leaves them with a mission. He sends them out. And verse 19 comes out very, very clearly. As the Father sends me, so I send you. A church is, you know, a church is an institution which Jesus has sent out to the world to do ministry, to be missions. And so we are challenged that even in finding God, this episode that we're doing is Jesus sent us. He says, as my Father sent me, so I send you. So you get out and do ministry. But you need to go with the peace of the Lord all around you. Because the people that are going to minister to need the peace. Are you going to meet to visit the sick? You need to minister peace to them. Are there families that are devastated? There are people who are struggling with their marriage. The families that are disunited. The families that are, you know, that are, all things are not well. Husband and wife, parent and children. Now, when you go out for mission, you need to bring peace to this family. And they don't know why you need it to be empowered with the peace of the Lord. And even when someone is not well, maybe has lost someone or is sick or something, you go with the message of peace and the person will settle down, will stabilize. So we get out as stabilizers. Missioners, you're a stabilizer. An evangelist, you're a stabilizer of someone. You go with the peace and the Lord Jesus Christ intended this for us and for you, for me and for you. And so friends, behind the closed doors, Jesus stands and they say, I send you. Now, one other thing that Jesus lives with us, and in verse 22 of John 20, the Bible says that, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is our guide. And he, when he breathed on them, this was the empowerment. Of course, we shall look at it in much more detail when we come to the day of Pentecost. But here in his appearances, one of the things that he did in the 40 days was to ensure that everything is safe. And I get another beautiful message from this, that actually, even in our life, before you get away, maybe you're going for a journey, make everything, make sure that actually everything in the house is safe. If you're a parent, you are somebody, you're a manager of sorts, before you leave and go somewhere, ensure that actually everything is in place. Now, Jesus Christ in the 40 days was ensuring that everything is in place 
So actually his disciples, his representatives do the work well. And so as men and women in the ministry, we learn a lot from the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't just depart. He would have actually just gone. After the resurrection, he would just shui, go. But he never did that. Jesus stayed around to ensure that actually everything is in place. The people that had denied him are back. The people that had doubted him are back. The 114 bit is the betrayer died before this happened. But who knows, maybe he would have been reinstated. So the lesson, one of the, one of the lessons that you catch from this is that Jesus prepares his people. Now, parent, prepare your children. Now, manager, prepare your people. And the people that you are with, make sure that everything is, is set and is in a place. In the 40 days, Jesus did it. And I find it as a very, very important lesson for me. And one other thing that actually Jesus lives with us, with them, was the authority. And we derive it from the scripture here. And the scripture here is in verse 23, 20, 23, the Bible says that if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. And Jesus gives you the authority here to forgive sins. And why does he pronounce this? Because actually all of us need forgiveness. You need the forgiveness from the Father, who is our Lord and Savior. You need the forgiveness, and each one of us needs forgiveness, needs forgiveness. And so this is something that Jesus serves with us with authority, that if you forgive, if you pronounce forgiveness, it will be forgiven. Someone will be forgiven. And actually it lightens up somebody. Is there anyone that has wronged you? If you pronounce forgiveness, Jesus says it will be done. If you don't, then it will not be. And so it's a process, and one time we shall find time and talk about forgiveness totally and see what steps you take and what is the importance of forgiveness and how do you go about it. And so this is very, very important, friends, that we are called upon. These men and women were hiding, were behind closed doors, full of doubt. And just like we have heard from, you know, other scriptures, like the men who were going to Emmaus, referred to somewhere, some, I mean, at, an, at one point, that we had hoped. And so doubt all through. Now this one, for fear, doors closed. And so the Lord Jesus Christ lives with them. This very important uh, ingredient in the ministry, the peace that we need, you need, you know, going out for mission, you and I, reaching out from our closets and meet people, speak to people, encourage people. And we get out all. This world is now so tumultuous. It is full of doubt. It's full of fear. And everyone is looking with fear. You drive on the road, fear. You walk, fear. You go back home, fear. You close your house, fear. And this is exactly what we are going through. May the Lord enable us during our season, during our time, that as he appeared to the disciples in the closed room, he appears to us. He appears to you. He speaks to you. He encourages you. These words of encouragement. And so, even everywhere that we go is full of fear, is full of, you know, but may he give you hope. And so I pray for you that may the Lord step into your situation now. May the Lord step into my situation. Like he stepped into the situation of doubt, of closedness. In the lives of the, of the disciples at this moment, may he step into your situation and may he make some pronouncements that bring hope. And so may our Lord Jesus Christ show up in your life today. May he show up in your family. May he show up in your business. May he show up in your life. May he show up by the closed doors. May the Lord keep you. And the one who, is still, who presented himself alive, may he present himself in your life today and in your business, and in your family, and in your everything, to instill hope, and to remove fear, and so that you move. Know that the world is dangerous, but you have the one that is stepping into your life, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.